Hey everyone, welcome to the Hornet King channel and this is the Yellow Jacket Super Nest video of 2022. I removed this massive German Yellow Jacket colony from an Amish client's house and I'm gonna show you how I removed this nest and feed the entire comb with all the larvae and pupating adults to my chickens, my emus, my rhea, and my squirrel. Here's the video guys, check it out. I'm the Hornet King and I removed some incredible and insane wasp nests. So I'm in an Amish customer's house and they got yellow jackets flying in around up into the soffit as usual. So we're gonna get this nest out for him. Okay, so going up in this cubby. And there's the nest. I gotta look at this stuff. I'm gonna get my respirator. Oh my god, that thing is freaking massive. You guys, can you appreciate how big that is? All right. There's a jug of milk. All right. Oh, that is huge. So this species is Vespula germanica anthic and is one of the least aggressive yellow jacket species that I deal with here in PA. But they make some of the largest colonies that I deal with here in PA. And this nest is a super nest. It is absolutely ginormous. And unfortunately, the cameras just do not do it justice. This thing's girth was insane, up close and personal. When I started vacuuming, I had no idea where the comb would be with inside this envelope. So I just kind of took a stab at it, literally, and just kind of guessed where the comb would end up. And luckily, when I started poking around, I found the comb. So what you're seeing here, the process that I use is vacuum up a little bit envelope to expose the comb, and then do some damage control and vacuum up as many of the workers that you're seeing flying around as I can. Every single individual you're seeing flying around here are female workers. They're sterile female workers. They do all the bidding for the nest, so they go out and do all the foraging, they catch all the bugs to feed to the larva, they do nursery detail. They're constantly working. They are non-stop working. And then when something is messing with the nest, they start defending the colony. So that's what you see them doing here. They're defending the colony. So people often think that wasps are just super aggressive all the time, and that's all they are, is just a-holes with wings. But they're really not. They're just really defensive of their colonies because they do all this work to build up this colony, and they don't just want something to just break in and just start tearing it up and killing it and eating it or whatever. So their instinct is to be defensive and attack any predators that are trying to attack the nest. So as I'm just vacuuming up a lot of the envelope and exposing more and more of the comb, a lot of the workers are coming up from in between the layers. They're coming at me, they're coming to my phones, they're going to the lights. Uh, people often say, well, why don't you put a light at the end of your vacuum nozzle? That way they fly right in your nozzle. Well, it's not necessarily the source of light but what the light illuminates within the room, they fly to all of that. They don't just fly to the main source of the light. And you can see here, they're flying all over my phone. Now, they weren't just at the lens. They were also just around the phone itself, around the edges. They were getting on the screen. I had to stop and do this several times because they kept clumping around the lens. They kept blocking off the image so I couldn't actually get a good shot. So I was trying to avoid uh, not having any good shots on my camera, so I had to make sure I keep vacuuming them off. So what you're seeing here is just the comb of one of the colonies from this nest. Since it being a super nest, that means that last year there was a colony that developed this nest as well. It dies at the end of the season, and then a daughter, one of the queens, that hatches from the original colony starts a new colony in the same spot and then continues to build the nest. So what you're seeing here is this year's comb. What I'm pulling out now is this year's comb. 
But inside of the rest of that nest, there's last year's comb as well. And that comb doesn't have any colony to it, doesn't have any workers, doesn't have any males, nothing. It is completely dead. But this new spot is what's developing. That's what makes a super nest. When you have these recurring colonies, they keep building and building and building. The nest gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Whether or not it's active on both sides is irrelevant. The fact that it's one solid piece makes it a super nest. So you can see the comb here. It is just packed with larva. There's tons of workers still in between the layers. A lot of the layers of comb you see there on the bottom, those are all queen cells. So they would have all become new queens and possibly new males, depending on who laid the egg, whether it was the queen or whether it was a worker. So there's a little bit of comb left over, some more queen cells, and had to pull that out of this little trench. Well, that's the majority of the rest of the workers, some nursery workers, and also some males were in there. And they were kind of just roaming around inside of that spot underneath the last bit of comb. So I just had to vacuum them up. Um, this is the part that gets a bit tedious when I'm doing a removal. It's just trying to get every little nook and cranny, especially where they're coming in from outside. So oftentimes I just leave the vacuum kind of sitting in one spot and let it just suck up any of the ones that are coming in from outside. Still doing some damage control on my phone and trying to get as many vacuumed off of there because they kept going at the light because I had the light on there. I only had one flashlight with me, so... I wasn't able to set the flashlight up in one spot, and uh, so obviously they kept going to that particular camera. Well, they're going to both the cameras, really. So bagging up the comb here, get it out of the way. There was no room to move around in this spot. This cubby was so small that when I put the vacuum down, I didn't have anywhere to sit. So I was literally sitting on one rafter and trying to like balance myself so I didn't go through their, this guy's ceiling. Um, and plus, I was contending with the vent pipe for his plumbing, for his uh, drain pipe. And I was also contending with this air duct, and um, it was just a real pain to really work on this nest inside this small little spot. How big this nest was in comparison to my hand. Look look how small my hand looks. And it's just, again, these camera angles do not do it justice. I mean, this was almost like my arm span. <laughs> if I, like, opened my arms up, it would probably need, like, maybe another, like, 10 inches. It would be about my arm span. It's pretty crazy. And how well it was stuck to the insulation batting. It was pretty intense. I mean, it's moving the whole thing. So when they attached that cellulose onto the, the, the paper of the insulation, they really stuck it on there. So I actually just had to slide my hands down in between it so I kind of break it free and pull it off from there. Try to get it all off in one piece because I wanted to see how big it was. And uh, I was pretty successful. I got about three quarters of it off in one piece. And you can see there's not a heck of a lot in between the layers over there where the original comb was. All of it was where the new comb is. Now I'm just trying to get it into a trash bag and bag it up. And unfortunately, since the quarters were so tight, it was really difficult to get a good angle on the bag it off this nest. So this is the best I could do. And not only is it a cramped spot, but man, it was so freaking hot in there. It was probably like 98 degrees outside, so... We're probably looking at, I don't know, maybe 110 degrees inside that freaking crawl space. Plus, I had to wear a respirator because of all this insulation and crap floating around in the room. So here, just doing a little bit of damage control and just trying to vacuum up any of the workers that I see. And you can see there's a ton of envelopes still caked around here. So where some of the insulation wasn't tight in that space, they were building the envelope to fill up that space. Down here is where the comb was sitting. I'm just getting the last few. And you can see them coming in from outside from right there. So just sat the nozzle there and just kind of vacuumed them up. Pretty much just spawn camp <laughs> and just try to get as many as I could as they came in from outside. Oh, really, really. Oh, 
wee the wee. The good birdies. Oh, rear the rear. You don't rear the rear. What a nice birdie. What a nice birdie. Little honey. Wiggle girl honey. On your face, please. Oh, what a good squeeze! Good squeeze. It's just the inside of the nest. Well, I mean, it's inside the vacuum. I had to suck up a bunch of nest in this. So, that's it. It's all the debris. All right, so, it has been a couple months since I've done this German yellow jacket colony for this Amish client. So, when I first brought the nest home, I had the envelope in this bag, and I had the comb in a different bag. This envelope sat out all night that one night and skunks tore into the bag and started tearing into a little bit of the envelope. So then I put it in the back of my truck, which has a cap on it, closed it up, left it in there for a few days. Then I took it down and put it in my barn, which is where it has sat for the last several months because it's now December and I removed this nest at like the 27th of September. So it has been sitting in my barn. Well, there's a couple holes in the side of the bag, so a mouse has clearly gotten inside of this thing. So I'm gonna open this thing up organically. I have not opened this yet for the last couple months. So let's get into it. Right there's the mouse hole. <laughs> All right, even smells a little bit mousy. But you can also see that the envelope is really starting to deteriorate and you do see it. Basically turning turning into glorified confetti. Okay. There's a lot of envelope inside here. We'll show that in a minute. All right. So this is the nest. <laughs> Something you'll notice here. This is the this is the front. This is what you were seeing in the video. You can see it's starting to deteriorate. I mean, this stuff falls apart pretty quick uh, after not being repaired over and over again. Um, they have a lot of little chasms in here. I will take the camera around and show you guys the inside of this um, up close. But you can see that there's some comb sticking out here. This comb is the original nest. So this is a two-year nest, what I call a super nest. Any nest that develops one year and is built on a second year, I call them super nests. 
German yellow jackets are one of the more notorious ones for making super nests. So there's a lot of extra comb in here that wasn't just from this year's comb. So where I initially was scraping into the envelope and found the comb, that was this year's nest. So this is where the current year comb would have come out. So there was extra envelope that came out this way and then the new comb that you saw in this video was coming out right here. This is where I pulled it out from. So if you spin it around, you can see all of this comb here. This is last year's nest. And then that comb even comes out the front here a little ways too. So you can see some comb there on the outside. So this thing was absolutely massive. This is the back side of it. This is where it was leaning up against the insulation. You can actually see some insulation on here somewhere uh, in, underneath. Um, and then this is the front. This is all the envelope on the outside. So I'm going to take this apart. I want you guys to see what it looks like on the inside. And you can just appreciate how big this thing was. So people always say, why not burn these nests? Nests do not burn. They smolder. Even though this is wood cellulose, it does not burn the way you think it burns. It, it'll, if you catch this on fire, you could hold a blowtorch on this thing and it'll just smolder like you're trying to burn bark or, or some other type of like mossy material. Um, it's not going to burn like where it just like goes up like a tinderbox. So I'm going to burn this thing because I have no use for it. It's all falling apart. I, it smells like mouse. So I'm going to burn this thing out in my little, uh, my little patio fireplace. So that way you guys can see how well it burns. So hopefully I stop getting some of those comments, just burn it. No, it burning is, it's completely silly. And people will say, well, pour gas on it, then burn it. Well, then you're burning off the gas. You're not really burning the paper. Um, then you're kind of having like a candling effect. Gasoline liquid does not burn. It's the fumes coming off the liquid that burns. So if you pour a bunch of gas down a hole and then you light it on fire, you're not lighting the liquid, you're lighting the fumes. So yes, as the fumes are burning, it gets really hot, it's gonna evaporate the, the gas faster and it'll release more fumes and then create more burning, but that's still not burning the nest. You're still just burning the fumes and you're maybe torching a few yellow jackets here and there, but you're not really burning this. So what I will do is I'm gonna take the comb out of here so you guys can see what the comb looked like from last year's nest and then we'll just burn the rest of it. So let's get to it. I don't think this is really gonna come apart very well because this is already starting to deteriorate. Since this is older comb, it's not gonna just come right out of here and they built quite a bit on here. So to get a better shot of this burning, I'm just gonna leave it all intact. Let's go out and burn it. All right, so let's throw this thing in here. yellow jackets in there. So first try to do the comb. Just sit there and smolder. Comb does not burn. I need to sit here and hold it. It's almost like flame retardant. And this is this nest is so dry. Like it's really dry. It's just like tinder material. Fire retardant. People say, burn the nest, burn the nest. No idea how they think that's gonna burn. They'll just sit there and smolder. Try to burn these little structures. <whistles> okay, let's try some envelopes since it's not burning. That's uh, an envelope. Burned a little better. This comb's not gonna burn now. Put that up here. Let's say, man, that nest will just go right up because it's made of paper. Kind of. <laughs> 
you definitely do some damage on the colony if you did this. But you'd have to, you'd have to be, you couldn't do this without a suit on if you're doing this to an active nest. You'd have to be standing right there and just holding flame on it to get it to do this. Billowing quite a bit of smoke. It's smoky. Hey, <laughs> smoke. Hello, emu birdies. How big Rhea the Rhea is. I know Rhea the Rhea. Back to the nest. Ooh, she's just smoldering, everybody. And you can see I'll break off the black stuff, and there's some more gray underneath. Beautiful. Ah, bikini bottom. Two moments later. There's a big chunk of envelope that came off over here. And the comb is just taking its sweet time smoldering. smoke. Is that better? Good. Let me turn this around. Oops. The is starting to burn on this side. It's black, crispy. There we go. Now you guys can see it. Oops. Put some of the crispy comb over there. Come, everyone. So underneath it here, you'll see some very unaffazed comb structures. Just barely starting to turn color. A lot of envelope here, unfazed. Look how bright and gray that is under there. See? Unfazed. started burning yet. These are all queen cells. These right here are queen cells. These are queen cells. These are queen cells. Riveting content. Yeah, some of the comb's starting to burn now. It took a while, I had to get pretty hot. Pretty hot, it's not that hot. Once that starts flaking off though, it's gonna cool down really quick. And that's pretty much it, folks. That was the riveting experience of burning a nest. Let's just go look at the birdies. Look how big you are, Rhea. Oh, look, here comes all these birdies. Little birdies. Oh, little red birdies. And the Ronettes. Oh, it goes Doris. Where are you going, Doris? Oh, Rhea the Rhea. That's a good Rhea. Hello, sweetie. Hey, Doris. Oh, hello, sweetie. Hello, sweetie booty. Oh, Rhea the Rhea. Hey, 
good view. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this super nest video, drop in the comments, let me know what you thought of it. If you have any suggestions for future videos or there's something you'd like to see me cover in an upcoming video, also drop in the comments, let me know. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so and hit that bell notification down below and that way you guys get an update anytime I do post a video. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video and supporting my channel and I'll catch you on the next video.